2021. What a year it has been. Many of us started the year in lockdown, a big boat got stuck in the Suez Canal, and England very nearly managed to win the Euros, only to once again go out on penalties. Oh well, it's coming home in 2022, right lads? Right? Still, it's not all been bad, and we gamers have gotten to play some fantastic new games in 2021. From old faves like Mass Effect Legendary Edition to multiplayer fun with It Takes Two, there's been plenty to keep us occupied. We don't like fun here at Triple Jump though, and so we're back once again to fill you with a sense of dread that can only be achieved by looking at some really bad video games. As with all of our worst games of year lists, a title must have received a minimum of seven professional reviews in order to be eligible, and where a game has been released on multiple platforms, we're just gonna go with whichever one got the most scathing reception. Better grab yourself a glass of day-old Prosecco, you're probably going to need it. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 worst games of 2021. Number 10. Necromunda Hired Gun, PS4, 49%. We're kicking off our list for once with a game that's actually sort of passable. Necromunda Hired Gun isn't good, but it is, at least according to the critics that reviewed it, playable. Set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, Necromunda Hired Gun sees players stepping into the shoes of a mercenary embroiled in a conspiracy involving the various gangs of Necromunda's criminal underworld. As first-person shooters go, Necromunda's gunplay isn't bad and one reviewer even went as far as to compare the feel of the game to Doom. Sadly, the whole thing is let down by its customization options, which actually did very little to help players optimize their build, as well as its plot, which is presumably easier to get your head around if you are a Warhammer fan, but most reviewers were quite stumped. Add into the mix various bugs that saw the game frequently crashing, and you end up with a game that's more trouble than it's worth. In summary, if you're a fan of Warhammer and feel inclined to immerse yourself in every aspect of the universe, then you might just have gotten something out of Necromunda Hired Gun. If that isn't the case, however, we probably don't recommend you bother with this one. Number 9. Demon Skin, PC, 48%. Call us cynical, but we can't help but feel like Demon Skin is so named in order to trick grandparents into buying it for their grandkids who've been begging for a copy of Demon Souls all year. <laughs> nice try, Demon Skin, but Nan is giving me a gift card this year, so I'll spend it on what I like. The game itself is of the hack and slash persuasion, and claims to be in the same vein as Dark Souls. Spoiler alert, it is not. Yes, the combat is challenging, but this is down to its poor controls. The game has a dark fantasy setting, but that's about where the comparison ends. The devs also claimed that Demon Skin had a skill tree, though at the time of release, no such thing existed, so that's yet another thing about the game that turned out to be a lie. If players could get past the barrage of mistruths though, then what they'd find was a game that was fairly unremarkable. It doesn't have anything to set it apart from the oodles of other indie hack and slash titles out there, and to add insult to injury, there were a number of players that reported bugs that prevented them from progressing the story. Oh well, at least Elden Ring's out soon, right? Number 8. Arkham Horror Mother's Embrace, PC, 48%. Given how popular the Arkham Horror board game is, it's kind of astonishing it's taken over 30 years for it to get a video game adaptation. Though considering the quality of Arkham Horror Mother's Embrace, we feel the fans of the game would rather no one had bothered. Players are plunged into a world of Lovecraftian nightmares as they attempt to uncover the truth behind the murder of an astronomy professor. Sadly, the only actual nightmares on offer are courtesy of the Arkham Horror's egregious gameplay mechanics. The main problem with the game is that it isn't always clear what players need to do in order to advance, and despite the game encouraging players to explore their surroundings, many often found that they were punished for doing so. There's also little depth to the combat 
combat, as weapons do a guaranteed amount of damage, so there's little in the way of tension to any of the fights. Although it's unfair to say that Arkham Horror is riddled with bugs, it does still suffer from the occasional issue that sees players having to reload a recent save because they become trapped by an NPC. As Modi certainly tried to bring Arkham Horror to video game audiences, but we do wish they tried a little harder. Number 7. I Saw Black Clouds, PS4, 48%. Recently, we've seen a good number of video games released that eschew traditional gameplay mechanics in favour of a good story, leaving players with little more to do than move their characters around and make the occasional decision. Though big in the early 90s, it's unusual these days for a game to be released that's completely FMV. However, Ghost Dog Films has decided to give the format a revival with I Saw Black Clouds, a game that's much more akin to Netflix's Bandersnatch than it is to anything else we've seen recently. The only interaction players have with the game is in the choices they're forced to make along the way. Sadly, whoever was in charge of continuity was clearly napping on the job, because there are a number of instances where choices just don't stack up with the consequences. The game also features a morality system which is attached to the protagonist's personality traits, but again, these often don't align to the decisions made by the player. If it were a film, I Saw Black Clouds would be a straight-to-DVD low-budget horror, and the addition of audience interactivity does nothing to help its cause, as the only thing scary about it is just how pants it is. Number 6. Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy The Definitive Edition Switch 44% Oh, Rockstar, how the mighty have fallen. When a remaster of Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas was announced back in October, players rejoiced. Finally, a chance to replay iconic games from my youth, but on the current generation, they probably all said. Sadly, the remaster was in no way what anyone had wished for, with all three games ending up as horrible-looking glitchy messes. It will be easy to blame the Switch itself for the game's low review scores, however, considering that the PS5 version only ended up with a meagre 55 out of 100 on Metacritic, it's fair to say that most of the fault lies squarely with Rockstar star and developer Grove Street Games. Not only was the remaster riddled with bugs and glitches, which despite their hilarity did render the whole thing somewhat unplayable, but the character models were absolutely laughable at times. I mean, come on guys, what the hell is that? Unsurprisingly, the entire thing was panned by both players and critics, to the point where Rockstar were forced to issue a formal apology. As it stands, we can only hope they're willing to patch the game into a playable state, but uh, we won't hold our breath. Number 5. Of Bird and Cage, PC 44% We've got to hand it to Capricia Productions here. They certainly tried to do something new with Of Bird and Cage, a title that aims to be as much a metal album as it is a video game. However, much like filling the disc tray of your PS5 with jam in the hopes it will dispense preserves onto your morning toast, just because an idea is new, it doesn't mean it's good. According to the developer, Of Bird and Cage allows players to experience a game that is tailored to its music leading them through a story of madness that's based loosely on Beauty and the Beast. The main problem that critics found with the game, though, is that it succeeded at neither of the things it set out to do. The soundtrack itself was hit and miss, and though the odd song here and there was enjoyable, much of it was forgettable. Equally, the gameplay was frustrating, as each area needed to be completed before the current song was over, and things like driving and combat were clunky at best. In short, you're better off just sticking on Master of Puppets while you play any Telltale game. It will be a far better experience. Number 4. Taxi Chaos, PS4, 42%. In recent years, there have been a string of games that have been dubbed spiritual successes, and the likes of Stardew Valley and Two Point Hospital have gone down very well with audiences, as they not only fulfil the requirement for nostalgia, but they also brought new things to the table. Then there's Taxi Chaos, a game that's been branded the spiritual successor to 1999's Crazy Taxi. 
Though if that's the case, we can only assume that Crazy Taxi's spirit has spent the last 20 years being tortured in hell. It would be unfair to say that Taxi Chaos is a Crazy Taxi clone without shame, because it's neither a clone, nor is it without shame. Now don't get us wrong, it tries to recreate the experience of jumping into a taxi and zipping fares about a city with reckless abandon, but it manages to dial up the meh factor on all fronts. Gone is the punky soundtrack provided by the likes of The Offspring and Bad Religion, instead replaced with generic royalty-free riffs. But even worse than that is the complete lack of anything that borders on chaos, leaving players with a game that's less Crazy Taxi and more Driving Miss Daisy. Number 3. Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood PS4 42% in theory, a game where you get to play as a werewolf sounds fantastic, but if Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood is anything to go by, then the experience is not nearly as exciting as our imaginations would have us believe. Set in the same universe as Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood that title is ridiculous, I'm just calling it Earthblood from now on, I'll be here all day. Set in the same universe as Vampire the Masquerade, Earthblood tells the story of Kahal, I think, an eco-terrorist werewolf who is banished from his pack and goes round raiding various corporations in the hopes of saving the planet. The game tries to balance stealth with action, but the problem is that it puts all of the fun points into stealth and all of the efficiency points into action, meaning it's far easier to just take the guns blazing approach, but players won't get much enjoyment from doing so. The narrative leaves a lot to be desired as well. Presumably those who've played the tabletop game will be familiar with the various bits of vocab that Earthblood throws their way, but the video game does nothing to explain any of it to new players. Couple that with poor voice acting, and you've got a game that, while technically competent, just isn't a great experience. I would rather sit down and watch Twilight, to be honest. Number 2. Balan Wonderworld Switch 36% it's really rather fortunate that we set out that rule about only including each game once on the list, even if it was reviewed poorly on multiple platforms. As if we hadn't, a whopping four entries would have been taken up by Balan Wonderworld. Now, don't get us wrong, we're all for serving you the hot and fresh facts, but there's only so many ways we can think of to say this game is completely ploppers. On the surface of it, Balan Wonderworld looks like your standard cutesy Nintendo fodder, and in fairness to the game, it is rather aesthetically pleasing. Unfortunately, Balan Wonderworld's beauty is only skin deep, and scratching the surface just a little reveals an incredibly shallow game. In terms of narrative, what little there is seems very confused, and the game refuses to clarify matters. The player character stumbles upon the somewhat menacing Balan, who transports them to Wonderworld, though there seems to be no explanation as to why. From there, players are tasked with platforming about the place, though considering that the controls are clunky and the level design is totally uninspired, this is easier said than done. <laughs> Wonderworld? More like, uh, I wonder what the hell they were thinking. <laughs> uh, that'll show them. And number 1, eFootball 2022 PC 25%. To the surprise of absolutely no one, the worst game of 2021 is of course Konami's eFootball 2022. Announced in July 2021, eFootball 2022 was the first title released following the rebranding of the Pro Evolution Soccer series. Clearly, the words Pro Evolution Soccer were some sort of protective talisman for the franchise, though, as the second they were dropped, the whole thing fell apart. Even if you haven't played eFootball 2022, you have undoubtedly seen a number of laughable screenshots floating about online which highlight just how horrible looking the game is. Its ridiculous graphics are just the tip of the iceberg, however, as not only were the players completely unrecognisable, but the game was damn near unplayable. 
Rather than sticking with the old reliable business model of just selling a completed game, Konami decided to make eFootball 2022 free to play, promising that additional content would be added at some vague point in the future. What players ended up with at launch was minimalist to say the least, and what was there was buggy, ugly, and controlled horribly. And at time of recording, there's no indication that that's likely to change anytime soon. So congratulations to Konami for creating what is undoubtedly the worst video game of 2021. I suppose this is what happens when you put all of your efforts into pachinko machines and neglect nearly everything else. Happy New Year.